listen to this track. Now tell me how you love it. You know you at the top and on the heavens right above it. We just begun what's up y'all how y'all doing welcome back to another episode of tuning in with your host david rowan let's get right to it today this episode is going to be kicked off a little bit different i did this sort of thing before um, i'm going to review one of this year's blockbuster movies that just recently came out fast and furious 8 also known as fate of the furious we've got good music on there Popular artists on the track, veteran artists have recorded for the Fast and Furious franchise before. Some newcomers just joined in. Let's kick it off, shall we? Mainly this album goes hard. Fate of the Furious, or also known as Furious 8, is heavy on trap, electronic, and R&B vibes. There's a couple times, there's a couple songs that you can actually like dance to in a club, and some of this trap music, can you can also dance to it if you want to. Songs such as Gang Up, Go Off, and Horses are posse cuts, featuring popular artists such as 2 Chains, Quavo from Migos, Travis Scott, Up and Coming Lil Uzi Furt, Young Thugs also on there, Kodak Black, many more on the trap music. Other worldwide known artists such as Pitbull and Up and Coming after she broke away from Fifth Harmony, Camila Cabello, and much more. Let's talk about the first single. Again, mainly this album focuses on trap music, but there are dance singles on this album that are that are appropriate for the club. But not only of the trap music, but also this album focuses heavily on the aspect of family. And this first song, Gang Up, with 2 Chains, Wiz Khalifa, and Young Thug, they, they step it up. They start the level of, hey, this is what you're going to expect from that soundtrack. Good vibes, good energy. Let's take a listen to it. I'm with the gang, 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 and we about to go up. Just some lanes, it's a thing every time we show up. You a lame, 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 and you so below us. Bet your hoes you know us, cause you know we glowed up. Stay down, and came up, and came up. We stay down, and came up, the gang up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a feeling that's winning. Whenever Two Chains and Wiz Khalifa come together, they make good music. Great music to listen to. I am not a fan of Young Thug. Ever since he came off with that mumbling jumbling music, I have no idea what he was saying. And it's just, it was, it, he sounds ridiculous. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. He sounds ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, but this song is good overall. Even though there are, in this album, yes, it, it does talk about trap music and, you know, they're going to throw out such as gangs and shoots and whatnot. Um, but in order to understand their aspect of family, what it means to them, they have to go back and dig their roots as to how they grew up. And this could give us an image or a picture in our minds as to, oh, this was like for them growing up. And the best way they can describe it is through their music. I'm a huge fan of Wiz Khalifa. I liked him since day one. Um, two chains, two chains. Um, 
he's he's good in my opinion. I have some of his music. Again, I'm not I'm not a big fan of Young Thug. Any fans of them? I'm sorry, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest in my opinion here. But overall, this is a good startup for the soundtrack. It gives you that sort of vibe as to what you're going to expect while listening to the rest of this soundtrack. Next up, and I talked about this before, we have Go Off with Travis Scott, Quavo from Migos, and Lil Uzi Vert. First, let's take a listen to it. One more ride. This is a good and smart collaboration between Travis Scott, Quavo, and Lil Uzi Vert. Quavo and Travis Scott have made music before together. They've been on features together from other artists, you know, guest appearance, and I believe they also made a collaboration, and I know that there is an album on the way produced by Murda Beats. Murda Beats produced um, Nicki Minaj's No Frauds, he produced Drake's Portland from his new album, More Life, and much more. But this is a good collaboration. Quavo and Travis Scott, they go hard. And this, this kind of music reminds me of just like, you know, diving into a mosh pit. I mean, it's that type. They give that sort of energy. Quavo made music with Lil Uzi Vert before, the one major that I know is obviously everyone knows this, but Bad and Bougie. And I don't know what it is about Lil Uzi Vert that everyone's got, you know, hyped for, but I don't know. I may need to hear more of his music because I'm, I'm not a big fan of his work either. But to get a really good understanding of of this type of music, you have to also understand the movie franchise. If anyone's seen, I hope, I hope you all have seen the very first Fast and Furious, is that you know the whole crew literally came from nothing, and you know they were they uh, they did mechanics on part time, but at daytime at nighttime, they were pulling off heists, stealing things, getting more money to build up their cars. So really, you know, they came up from nothing. And then throughout the movie franchise, they became a better family, and apparently they got rich. So, uh, lesson learned. Well, don't live that lifestyle. But these artists on the soundtrack have been through sort of the same journey as to the characters in The Fast and Furious. You know, they started from nothing. You know, they used to trap, selling dope off the streets, um, cocaine, and then... They were discovered in the rap industry, and now they're living off riches. So, but you can, you can, if you haven't seen these movies, listening to the soundtrack still gives you a good idea about sort of what the movie is about through the artist's experiences, you know, describing their lifestyle, and also just rapping about uh, family and pretty much defending each other and uh, don't, me don't mess with them pretty much. <laughs> Next up, my favorite song of the entire soundtrack is Good Life with Kaylani and g Easy. Take a listen. The reason why I absolutely love this song is 
Two of my favorite artists are collaborating together, and I've spoke about them many times before, and if they have a concert together, I'm going to be the first one to get tickets. Um, K-Line comes, comes in with good vocals. Jeezy comes in, giving out the background, laying down a few verses, and I, I liked how they used this song in the movie itself. I don't want to give any spoilers away, really, because I haven't even seen the movie I kind of looked up the ending on YouTube, so yeah, but I kind I kind of know what happens. But this movie is used as the closer of the movie, such as Fast and Furious 7's Charlie Pruth and Wiz Khalifa's. This song gives off a um, a good sentimental value, and it brings. A level of respect to the characters because really all it's about is just living a good life surrounding yourself with friends and family and you know what even if if you're rich and you want to buy some good stuff go go ahead be my guest I'm not complaining do what you want but I think that it was the entire message from this song and I liked how it was used in the movie um, but I'm just I'm in love with the song just because of my favorite artists are on it. Um, and this song is, I believe it was the third single that was released from the soundtrack after Go Off. And um, I believe, well, I'll, ta I'll talk about that song later, but it's Pitbull, J Balvin, and Camila Cabello. But I think Good Life was the third single. And right now, with chart wise and view wise, I talked about this before to say that Good Life may not be the flagship of, you know, the flagship song for this entire soundtrack that I think it was Go Off. But after looking up the ending and uh, looking at the view count on YouTube and chart wise, I think this might be actually the flagship. I think I was underestimating it. Um, I mean, it's. It's a very smart choice. I know that Kehlani and Jeezy have worked together before on Jeezy's uh, previous album. And I think Kehlani may have something to do with um, her own songs. And I don't know if Jeezy was a part of it or not. I don't think it was officially uh, released in her album. But, I mean, this is a really good collaboration in my opinion. Um, it's got a party vibe. It's got sentimental value. You can dance to it at a club if you want, or you can just enjoy it, relax, and stay outside. But if you couldn't tell, I was vibing to it when you were listening to it earlier. I mean, it is, in my opinion, it is that good. Next up, we have some newcomers on the track. I've never heard of these people before, except for one of them. We have the song Horses by PNB Rock, Kodak Black, and A Boogie with the Hood. Now this is, you know, this is again going back into the trap music. Um, the only person that I've heard from this song that I've heard of is Kodak Black, but I've never heard of his music. I've never, I actually, I, I didn't sit down and listen to his music. This is the first time that I've ever heard any of them actually perform. But let's take a look at it. This is Horses. All these horses in my car got me going fast. I just want to do the dash, put my pedal to the gas. Going so fast, hope I don't crash. One false move that could be my last. All these horses in my car got me going fast. I just want to do the dash, put my pedal to the gas. Going so fast, hope I don't crash. One false move that could be my last. I just pulled up in the bands. It was just me and my man. I enjoy listening to this song. This song, you know, after all the after all the songs talking about family and having sentimental value along with some party vibe to it, I think in my opinion what it really comes down to are the cars. Yes. That's probably the only reason I see the movies is just to see the cars go off. And with this song, it focuses on cars. And this reminds me of um, Fast and Furious 7 song called Whip. And they've had they've had upcoming artists on that track also. 
It's got, it only talks about cars. And I think that is what the good foundation is. That's the true foundation of the movie tr- franchise is all about the cars. And this song talks nothing but that. And it's got good vibes to it. Um, I can sway back and forth listening to it. Again, I've never heard of these uh, artists before. Um, the only one I heard of is Kodak Black. But again, I haven't delved into his music. But overall, and I think this is the only song that talks about cars. I mean, yeah, everything else is important as well. But I think, especially if, especially of the movie franchise, what it started off with are the cars, showing them off, you know, drag racing, doing stunts with them. And this song goes back to that idea, saying, hey, let's not forget, you know, why are we here in the first place is the cars. And this song is a good interpretation of it, uh, talking about horsepower under the engine in his hood, and it's a good vibe. I like listening to it. Next up, fresh out of prison, yep, I said it, is Kevin Gates with his song, 911. Let's take a listen to it. You just pull up and you hop out and you kill it, 911. Fresh out and making new music again, Kevin Gates. And I don't want to go into his story, but I think it had something to do, and it could be a rumor. Take this with a grain of salt. I think it had something to do about with a woman and him uh, on stage. I think she was, I think she was hit, kicked, or something like that. I don't know. But now he's back. He's making music. This song. It's good, but at the same time, this reminds me exactly of Drake's controller. I swear, it's it. I think it's literally the same music. I looked up information, um, and the producers are different, so I don't know how he probably got this idea in his head, thinking, you know what, that song's good. I want to make something out of that. But the writers aren't the same, the producers aren't the same, so but it it just sounds exactly the same. And but even though it's still good music, I still like it. It's got a party vibe to it. Uh, but this song talks about his idea of a woman and I mean she's on fire. I mean whenever she gets out, goes out in public, I mean good lord watch out because you know, She's stunning, she's beautiful, she's remarkable, and no one can mess with her. And I think that is his message coming across to this song, that no one can get on her level. And I think he's describing literally the perfect woman based on, you know, her looks, her beauty. You know, doesn't really go on, like, inside her personality, stuff like that. Just image-wise... And, you know, we all know there's a lot more to it. But as going off on the sa- on the song as to what he's saying, I think that's his um, overall message as to what he's uh, rapping about here. But this is, I think this is a little bit of a different sound coming from Kevin Gates. He He's known for making trap music as well. But this is more of a um, slow contemporary type uh, party vibe. But it sounds almost exactly the same as Drake's Controla. Uh, Look it up and, you know, compare the two. But overall, I like this single. Next up, we have Don't Get Much Better with popular artists Jeremiah, Ty Dolla Sign, and Sage the Gemini. Take a listen. Hey, 
We done been through it all. They was praying on our downfall. There's one idea that sticks in my head listening to this song, and it's young people. And what I mean by that is, I can imagine walking into a Hollister store and listening to this song because this has, in my opinion, a beach vibe with teenagers, young people hanging around, probably shopping at the mall, hell, getting some ice cream maybe, whatever. But it's got like that young kid vibe to it. And it's, I don't know, I can imagine this in like, um, I don't know, maybe a, maybe a high school movie, you know, when they edit it and clean it all out. And it's, I kind of, I kind of laughed about it at first, but again, this is, this is okay music. I mean, Jeremiah can put out good music. There's Tyler, Ty Dollar Sign, he's been everywhere, and Sage the Gemini, he makes good music. But, um, overall, it's, I didn't expect this type to make it onto the soundtrack. And I don't know if they showcase it in the movie entirely. I have no idea. But this, I can like, like I could walk into the store, I could walk into the mall and say like go into a Hollister or American Eagle and I can picture listening that song in the background. It's got that, you know, a pop feel, but it, it just, it reminds me of going to a beach Wow, a whole lot of music reminds me of going to the beach. Maybe I'm onto something here, huh? A trip to the beach, hmm? But um, it's it's it just it it puts me in that vibe. I can imagine it, like listening it walking into an outlet mall in California or Florida, and I could picture listening to that type of music. But overall, I think it's good. Wrapping up, we have J Balvin, Pitbull, and Camila Cabello in Hey Ma. Take a listen. Now, there are two versions to this song, um, one in English and one in Spanish with the same artist. Um, this film took place mostly in Cuba, so I think this is why they wanted a Spanish influence in the soundtrack because of the locations that they shot at. And picking these artists was a very smart choice. On top of adding Camila Cabello onto this track after her uh, break up with Fifth Harmony and I've heard that Britney Spears was actually supposed to be on the track But they later remixed it and put it uh, Camilla onto it to make it to the final cut I don't know if there's gonna be a remix for it featuring Britney Spears. I don't know, but I heard that Pitbull was going to make music with Britney Spears regardless um, But this this has a dance vibe I imagine myself in like Mexico drink, and drinking tequila and dancing around with um, multiple people. It's got that dance vibe. You can party to it. Um, it's uplifting. I think this is this is one in another track, but this song was heavily influenced by the dance pop uh, aspect, and I think this song. Uh, uh, wraps up the entire soundtrack well. It is the last one on the list, and I think this is a good finale, a good end for the soundtrack to listen to. Um, I enjoy listening to it, and it's got it's got a good summer vibe to it, and I enjoy I enjoy listening to it. A special message before I wrap up this episode: uh, next week is the last episode of tuning in for this semester and i'll be coming back in august with brand new content stepping it up a notch i aim to take it to the next level but before i do that for the last episode you know next week i am taking in music songs requests to play for the intro and ending and what i mean by that is if someone sends me a request say i don't know rihanna's what's my name I'll edit that out, put five seconds in, 
put it in the intro, and move on to the next. So I'm taking your requests right now. You can uh, comment down below on the video on YouTube. Hit us up on Campus Citizen. Hit up my Facebook as well, or Snapchat me if some people on my Snapchat are listening to this. I hope. Cross your fingers. Um, but show support for the Campus Citizen. We have an amazing staff of student journalists. They put in great effort. They give it They give it their all. And um, that wraps it for this episode of Tuning In. Peace out. Okay. Right off them tonight. Yeah. I can feel it, baby.